Good morning, folks. Planets are going to be lining up in just a couple of days. The sunspots, they might be getting ready already. We're going to dive right in at spaceweathernews.com and check out the last 24 hours on our star. Fairly benign when looking at the Earth-facing latitudes and longitudes, the big filament is still stable as well. We're going to come next to the solar wind. While you see the yellow speed dropping out over the last three days, there was a brief shift in phi angle when a denser wave briefly re-elevated the speed yesterday and we took what could be the last reverberation storm of this stream. And I am pretty sure that it's a GOES magnetometer glitch you see there rather than the world about to end, but hey, we'll see in the next 10 minutes. These photos from Observer J come from way north near the auroras that broke out during the storm. If you don't know Jay, he is pretty well positioned for these and often posts great shots to Facebook. Okay, we're back to the solar flaring, or lack thereof, and when we come to the sunspots, it's not immediately apparent what I meant earlier with the central spots disappearing between the two. But alas, the flare fields video I keep asking you to watch is now in play as we've got delta potential at the trailing portion there. Eyes open. Now folks, this happened yesterday as the news was coming out. Little pop near the coronal hole, and after that, the filament just behind him lifted into the corona and released. Now NASA is tracking the eruption on the Enlil spiral, and it shows a potential glancing blow impact at Earth, but the wave is very weak. NOAA isn't even tracking the eruption, and when I look at coronagraphs, I see almost all ejecta missing south. If we're going to take more geomagnetic effect soon, my guess would be that they would be from another coronal hole stream. Next one is incoming down there on the left. We did take a six-pointer in Russia yesterday, but folks, I'm still expecting a shift from these longitudes over to the Americas in the coming two weeks. Deep tremors might signal a blot transmigration is already underway. Other news today includes a major storm surge in Africa that took out homes and destroyed the fishing regions along the coastline. Next, we're going up way up to Juno at Jupiter, where southern auroras and a cloud photo of the southern hemisphere lets us know Juno might be the craft to watch right now. Amazing. Then we've got an article on the importance of the AMO for Africa. What I'm showing you here, though, is how the global warming scare of the 40s, the Ice Age fears of the 70s, and the recent global warming discourse follows this pattern, along with others like the Pacific Decadal Oscillation. Back to Earth, where global warming drunk dialed as X in Perth. Bit of a cold shoulder there. Dust it off, bruh. Fall outlook for the United States is out from the Weather Channel, and folks, what's after this is what interests me. The cold will shift to the east just in time for winter. It's 2013 all over again. South Dakota wasn't too happy with the system that Nebraska sent up through its border last night. We should expect more of that tonight, as you can see both tropical systems flanking the continent here. More storms up into the Midwest thereafter. We've got the rest of the world's weather, plus shots of our star to close. Folks, I want to remind you that we've expanded the choices for the Booster Gear supporting the Disaster Prediction app. There's now more than just the black at booster.com S0. And as always, if you're new here, you've got some homework to do, catching up with the homepage videos at suspiciousobservers.org. It's 3.45 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.